Are men and women really that different? Do they really love in different ways? On today's show, The Art of Love, we'll examine how different people from different perspectives engage in various mating strategies. I'm your host, it's Arlene Sanchez, the Queen of Hearts. Bush and Smith proposed that the sexual strategies theory, which states that men, more so than women, are more likely to spend proportionately more of their mating efforts in short-term mating. They lower their standards in short-term relationships when compared to long-term ones. They feel reproductively constrained and finally seek but, not, but certainly not avoid sex if pregnancy is likely in short-term relations. Twelve years later, a comparative study was done by Miller entitled The Attachment Fertility Theory argues that there are relatively few involved gender differences in mating strategies and preferences. Today we will we will put both of these theories into perspective as we interview and analyze eight college students, four male and four female, from SST and AFT University collectively. The ind individuals from SST represent SST thought from an early 90s perspective, while AFT University rep represents individuals accustomed to the new technological re revolution here in America. Our guest today from SST, we have John, Frank, Betty, and Zoo. From AFT, we have Mark, Steve, Kelly, and Stephanie. And I'm the Queen of Hearts and your hostess, Arlene Sanchez. Welcome to the show. Let's get started. Question number one goes to Frank, Sue, Stephanie, and Mark. Have you ever had a short-term or long-term sexual relationship? Let's start with Frank. Yes, I have both short-term and long-term relationships. Sue? Well, I have actually only had long-term relationship. I mean, if you are not in it for the long run, why are you even in a relationship? Right. Mark? Yes, I've had a few, a couple of long-term relationships in the past. A couple of girlfriends here and there, but I'm more of a spontaneous kind of guy, you know? Okay. And Stephanie, what about you? I agree with Mark with this. I mean, I have boyfriends that are long-term and short-term, but they're all in the same way. He tells me what I want to hear, and I tell him my dreams, but at the end, we always break up. I either find somebody better, or he cheats on me. But at the end of the night, my late-night booty call is all I need, because obviously, I'm too busy for a relationship. Okay, given the responses, I'd like to follow up that question with this one. Specifically talking to those individuals, Individuals who do spend an effort pursuing relationships, how much time and money do you invest? John? Uh, probably about a hundred bucks a week to wine and dine the ladies on the short term and even less for the long term. I mean, come on, after a while, everything just becomes routine. Right, yeah. Betty? I guess you can say that I spend about $40 a week getting my hair and nails done just in case Mr. Wright walks by. Okay, interesting. Steve? Hey, I'm not the kind of guy that will break on the bank of the possibility, but I'd rather be the free guarantee on any frat house or sorority house. Okay. And what about you, Kelly? Shoot, I have way too many other bills to be worried about shishes and die. Okay, great answer. Let's keep going. Question number two. Do you want to have kids? Frank? Maybe way down the road. What about you, Sue? I hope so, maybe two or three, but definitely not, not until I graduate and, and marry. Okay, and John? Oh man, I'd have an entire football team if I could. And Stephanie, what about you? Oh, I don't know. Whatever my husband can give me, I guess. Okay, now this question goes to all of you. If you knew that having sexual relations with your partner, whether in short-term or long-term relationship, on a particular night, will result in pregnancy, would intercourse still be likely? John? Of course. How else am I going to get my football team? <laughs> Betty? <laughs> well, it would depend if he was my husband or not. I wouldn't have, want to have sex with anybody else but my husband. After all, I want to have a baby. That's my life dream. Okay, and Frank? Oh, well, yes. I'll, I'm pretty athletic myself, so I like to continue my le legacy. I'll go through it. Interesting. And what do, you, uh, what do you think, Steve? Well, I'm a Trojan man, so any sex in a relationship, I'm all for it. But for, for making babies, uh, I'm not that into it. Okay. Kelly, what's your response? 
kids? Oh no, I'm way too busy for that. I go to work full time, I go to school full time, I do internship on the weekend. I don't have time for kids right now. And I've been on the birth control pill since I was 16, and I plan on staying on it until I'm ready for kids. Very smart girl. Mark. Isn't there a plan B or something that you can take? Oh wow, okay. Stephanie, what about you? Oh no, I don't want to be caught up like my sister. Interesting, and question number three. How many sexual partners do you wish to have versus how many do you realistically expect to have? Let's start with SST. Frank? Well, I wish to have 30 women in my lifetime, but due to women's prudish ways, I probably will get like six or seven. And Sue? One, just one, but given the fact that men have more sexual partners than women, I uh, probably would end up having to be with three men until I find Mr. Right. Okay. Very interesting, Sue. And Stephanie, how would you respond? I would love to be all the hot guys, but STDs and pregnancies are a big deal. But eventually, I would just get with the people I already know, and eventually settle down with them later. Okay, and Steve? In the words of Lil Wayne, I wish I could sex every girl in the world. But as, for, as reality goes, I've got over 4,000 friends on Facebook, Instagram, and look, Twitter as well. Wouldn't show me how friendly they could really be. So as long as my internet keeps working, on my way to my goal. Ha. And finally, for our last question of the night, do any of you lower your standards in short-term relationships as compared to long-term? AFT, Steve, why don't you begin? Hell yeah, I get way more as with my beard goggles than without them. Okay, Mark. Sure do, lower standards always equals more sex. Yep, Kelly. I mean, I have to. I can't just sit around and wait for Mr. Wright to come along. What about you, Stephanie? Sure, if I can't uh, find the right kind of guy for me, whatever is available, I'll take. Wow. Tell us how you really feel. SST, what about your side? Betty can go first. No, I don't. I am with Betty. I do not participate in short-term relationship at all. John. Sure do. How else am I going to get a full team? In record time. <laughs> Quantity over quality in this part of the game. Okay, thank you. Well, that's all the questions we have for you tonight, folks. But I'd like to ask you to review the results. As you can see, the SST theory is a bit outdated in its application to current mating strategies and preferences amongst 21st century college age students. There is an exponential amount of access to sex and sexual material for relatively low effort, so it changes up the dynamic between both men and women. Women currently also have a lot more control over their bodies and education, which allow them to make better, more independent decisions with regards to sex, mating, and dating. These results, therefore, are inconsistent with the sexual strategies theory, which, but consistent with the attachment fertility theory that proclaims more gender similarities and differences. Hmm, interesting, right? And that concludes our show for the night. I'm your hostess, Arlene Sanchez, the Queen of Hearts. I'd like to thank all of our guests for taking time with their busy student schedules to participate in today's The Art of Love. Thank you very much.